in talks. I was actually voluntold that I was going to be speaking this event. Oh, yeah. You'll notice that I, I have a kind of, uh, my topic is not digital forensics related. However, I think it's a very important talk that needs to be given. Uh, and I'll be giving it in the full hour length at DerbyCon uh, this September uh, in Louisville. So, my name is Joseph, and I'm a hacker. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. I, and I expected someone to, someone to say, hi, Joseph, but anyway, I'm a hacker. And I mean that in the traditional sense. I'm not talking about pwning systems, though I've certainly done that uh, professionally. Uh, uh, you know, but I, I believe that it's important to understand technology from a, uh, a very low level. I believe you need to have an in-depth understanding of it, and I love that sort of stuff. So the topic of my talk is raising hacker kids for good or for awesome. Now, in the past couple of years, we have had a trend in the InfoSec community where we've started to actually have events for kids. You've got Hack Kids Con, you've got DEF CON Kids now, and I have opinions on one of those that are very strong. Uh, and the reason this topic is important to me is because these are three quarters of my children. Yes, three quarters. When I, for those of you who are fraction challenged, that means that I have eight children, ranging in age from 14 all the way down to uh, two. 20-month-old twins who aren't on this picture. And that's our uh, class photo for 2012. So, one of the things that I really worry about is that one, hacker's a dirty word, right? But I want to raise hacker children. What does that mean? I want my children to have that in-depth understanding of technology. I want them to understand that we live in a world where technology is ubiquitous. Computers are connected to our lives. The types of technology we carry on ourselves, cell phones, our laptops, iPads, you know, tablet devices, it's everywhere. It's a part of our daily lives. And most, the, the underlying sort of uh, mindset is that because recent generations use so much technology that they understand how it works. They don't. I work with Cub Scouts. I work with Boy Scouts. They use it. They're comfortable with it. But they have no idea how the underlying technologies work. They don't understand that they're being tracked via GPS. Uh, they don't understand that all, that text, all those text messages persist. Uh, and most people don't. So I want my children to understand that. So I do things like I, I teach them how to program. I believe that idle hands are definitely the devil's playground. Uh, and to illustrate this point in a non-technical way, back in the 90s when I was growing up in the city of Houston, there was a master plan community, very beautiful, lots of piney woods, bike trails, hike trails, parks. But it was designed for, for young families. And at a certain point, those young children became teenagers. And they started to quickly realize that beyond going to school and going home, there was nothing for them there. So a lot of those kids turned to drugs and alcohol. And at a certain point, some of them started knocking over liquor stores with guns and, and breaking into uh, houses. So, and you know, lives were ruined. Those kids simply weren't engaged in anything they cared about. And so they made their own engagement. I'm a big fan of not teaching kids about certain types of technology. You look at the DEF CON kids, uh, and I, I'm not picking on DEF CON kids. My oldest daughter learned to walk at DEF CON 7. She was nine months old. I've been going, you know, I, I went to DEF CON for a long time. I don't think it's appropriate to teach a seven-year-old kid how to pick locks. I don't. And the reason why is because seven-year-old kids do not have the ethical maturity to understand the consequences of their actions should they use that skill in the wrong context. Right? Locks are important. The first time you learn to pick a lock, you realize that locks mean nothing. I got my first set of picks. I went to, I went to a, a competition. Picked four locks without any instruction whatsoever. Got home, picked every lock in my house. And I was like, it doesn't matter anymore. Besides, if someone really wants them, they'll just break your window. So I'm not a big fan of teaching kids how to pick locks and then letting them go. I'm not a big fan of having social engineering contests for children where you teach these kids these techniques. Why? I think it's good to, uh, to teach them that they can be socially engineered. I think it's good to teach them things at a high level so they can be aware that maybe they're being socially engineered. I don't think it's a good idea to say, hey, here's social engineering, and here's how you can be better at it at 10 or 12, simply because these kids don't have the emotional maturity to be able to handle it. Uh, so if we're going to raise these kids, we have to give them not only the skills, not only teach them how to do these things, but to give them, you know, try to teach ethics. Uh, we don't do a good job of that. Knowledge is knowing tomatoes are fruit, not, you know, wisdom is not putting in a fruit salad. <laughs> you know, it's hard to teach that. Uh, it's just something you kind of, you 
kind of learn. And that's part of the problem, is, right? A lot of that maturity doesn't come until we get older. I think it's great to teach a kid how to program. I think you should teach kids about exploits when you teach them how to program, because that's something they need to be aware of. I think if you're going to teach a kid how to write exploits, uh, you know, I think that's a bad idea. I, I just do. They don't have the. They don't know how to. Uh, they don't have to use it responsibly. They don't have the wisdom. So here's what I've identified as some of the biggest issues facing us, and I think this is actually my last slide. There are no ethics classes taught anymore. We don't teach kids about ethics really until they get to college. That's bad. There are no hard and fast rules on what's appropriate for your children because you know them, and unfortunately, I mean, if you have enough kids or you deal with enough kids, you realize an emotional and ethical maturity different. Same kids, same ages, same upbringings. Not the same. What works for me, what works for my family may not work for you, but you should always learn from what other people are doing. You gotta keep your kids engaged in interesting and important ways, but you need to make sure it's important to them. And I'd like to thank all these people for helping me out to distill this talk down from an hour to six or to six